Hey y'all, <clears throat> Data Guy here, and today I wanted to make a video kind of in response to a comment I saw, which was make a data engineering zero to hero guide. So that's what I got for you today. I have kind of a multi-phased approach, um, five phases really, where I'm gonna kind of guide you through, hey, what are the different steps that you can take high level to get started in data engineering? What are the you know first phase being, hey, what are the foundational knowledge what are you going to need to have in data and programming, understanding data structures, programming fundamentals, then going into core data engineering skills before kind of breaking out of just like, hey, skills and understanding the two, what are the real world data tools? What are the big data concepts you'll be working with day to day? Then going into more advanced, you know, in production data engineering and analytics engineering practices. Um, and then because pretty much every data engineer is going to touch ML these days, I'm going to also talk a little bit about machine learning engineering for data engineers. So got a lot to get through today. So without further ado, let's get into it. And we actually have a fellow student today, the data dog, who is here to help learn with us on how to become a real hero in data engineering. Um, so sorry, he just wanted to come in and say hi. Um, but the first thing I wanted to talk about here was really one of those basic things in data engineering, and that is having an understanding of different data structures and the basics of data. So that really means like understanding, hey, the types of data you're gonna encounter as a data engineer. So things like JSON files or how databases work with rows and columns, um, semi-structured data, unstructured data, and understanding how these different data types are handled, stored, processed, um, and then really learn the essentials of databases. Now, there are so many different data types, databases out there. And really the reason why you wanna learn about all the different essentials of different databases and why they're important and how these different data types are stored, handled, and processed is so that you can understand which types are best for which. It's unlikely that you're ever gonna end up using all of them all the time, in fact, you're probably only gonna end up using a few different databases that you specialize in, but find out which those are. Find out which ones you make, you know, make the most sense to you, um, which make the most sense to the types of use cases, you know, whether you're interested in building transactional databases or you just wanna be strictly backend. There's gonna be different types of databases and data types depending on where you wanna explore there. And then kind of compounding that is understanding how these different types interact with core data warehousing concepts like extract, transform, load workloads, like ELT workloads, um, which are, you know, and how you want to move and shape data for analysis and also online analytical processing databases, which are, you know, the technologies that power more complex analytical queries. Um, really just all the different types of data and ways you can store it that's really where you want to start in your data engineering journey because that'll give you the biggest foundation for understanding, hey, what are the different types of data out there? What are the different types of tools needed to work with them? And what considerations you need to have for those different types of data? Now, the next step you're going to want to take on your programming journey is learning from, learning how, what different programming languages are best for which and what programming language you like. But primarily, you're going to need to know Python and SQL. So you're always going to want to begin by building a really solid foundation in Python and SQL, which isn't even up here because you're going to need SQL to interact with pretty much any database. Um, so building a solid foundation in both is critical to being a data engineer. Python is the more versatile of the two languages, supports more complex libraries like Pandas, NumPy, and is more used for data manipulation and analysis and also machine learning. Um, and so you're gonna wanna get comfortable with Python basics, things like loops, functions, error handling, classes, um, and commonly used libraries in data engineering. And then SQL is pretty much the de facto standard for querying and manipulating data within databases. So practice writing queries to filter and aggregate and join tables. And I have a whole video on how to set up and also optimize your SQL queries. Um, so you can learn how to effectively manage data within a database without you know, ton, spending a ton of extra cycle or database cycles on inefficient SQL queries. But at the start, just understand how to work with SQL so that you can easily manipulate data. Um, and then also, a lot of times you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with terminal or shell and 
otherwise known as like Linux or Unix commands for file management or also just shell scripting. A lot of times, if you're a data engineer, you're gonna be working with Linux-based systems and VMs, and knowing at least some basic shell commands will help you navigate directories, set permissions, and interact with those VMs from in, in kind of remote desktop setups. Um, so it's not like something you might, you'll necessarily be doing all the time, but it is a core skill to have for being able to effectively work in cloud environments. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna think about, and this is kind of moving into phase two and core data engineering skills, is data modeling. Have a whole video on this, but data modeling is really the foundation of data architecture in data engineering. So you're gonna to wanna to begin by understanding how schemas like star and snowflake schemas work, their components, you know, different dimension tables, fact tables, dimension tables create, contain descriptive information, fact tables contain measurable quantitative data. And this knowledge is really essential in structuring data warehouses that allow effect, efficient querying and reporting. You can't just throw everything in a database and expect it all to be you know, easily accessible. You need to plan for it. So practice creating models based on hypothetical business requirements to learn how to organize data optimally, because that's gonna be a skill that's going to be valuable whether you're designing databases, data warehouses, making sure that you're able to design them efficiently is a really, really critical skill um, for being an effective data engineer or database administrator. And here you have kind of just another few different types of data models that you use to conceptualize, understand how your data relates to each other. And that's really all data modeling is, is building up a structure you know, in your mind, but also in the database um, that allows you to know, hey, you know, this is a user that has a set of purchases from a store um, and storing them all in logical entities. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do, and I alluded to this before, is really start to master more advanced SQL concepts. Um, and you know, I have a few examples of things up here, but really understanding more complex things like window functions for calculating running totals and ranks and moving averages, actually running calculations within your queries. And then also things like comp common table expressions, so almost macros for your SQL statements that allow you to break down complex queries while subqueries can help retrieve data within a query. Um, and then also, again, as I talked about before, practice those query optimization techniques, things like indexing that'll help you improve performance. Um, and then you can also wrap SQL processes with Python. Uh, learn how to write ETL scripts or Airflow DAGs that automate the process of extracting data from sources, transforming it into a usable format, loading it into a destination. Um, and here you're gonna look at libraries like Pandas for data transformation, SQL Alchemy for connecting to databases, um, and Python is really a great wrapper around SQL commands to make them more structured and, and more part of an automated pipeline process rather than you just running ad hoc SQL commands. So the next step is really putting all of that Python and SQL and data modeling into practice and starting to build data pipelines. Um, data pipelines are really the crux of data engineering. And so you have kind of the logical and conceptual understanding of data pipelines, you know, pulling from data sources, having an intermediary staging data to transform that data before moving it into your backend data warehouses, and then also where that data is getting fed out to analytics or machine learning teams. Um, and so you're really gonna wanna start to understand you know, both the logical and platform architecture for these solutions for extract, transform, load, and extract, load, transform uh, use cases as each of those has different strengths and weaknesses. Um, and so this is really where you're putting it all together, putting in all you know, the skills about, hey, what are the different data warehouses I'm using? Um, and starting to build things like batch processing. That's kind of the most basic uh, standard approach, which is where you involves processing data in intervals. So you, you know, something like using Apache Airflow to automate pulling a page or a section of data from an API or an application, passing the data to something like an S3 bucket before uploading it into you know, a database um, and then querying it with something like AWS or Amazon Athena to update a Looker dashboard. Um, and so start building some of these, you know, kind of sample workflows to understand data dependencies, triggering tasks, handling errors, um, because this foundational knowledge is really essential for designing robust data pipelines that will deliver consistent and accurate data to downstream systems. So once you've gotten some, you know, experience building and, you know, some basic data pipelines, building some basic data ingestion systems, it's then time to take it to the cloud in phase three and start using real world tools and 
familiarizing yourself with big data concepts. So the first step in this, I would say, is really starting to familiarize yourself with some of the popular cloud data warehousing solutions like Amazon Redshift, like Google BigQuery, like Snowflake. These warehouses are really optimized for analytical queries and are really easily scalable as data grows without a lot of manual intervention on your part. So practicing understanding, hey, how do I load data in these platforms? How do I organize tables? How do I write complex queries to support fast and efficient data retrieval will really help to give you, you know, hands-on experience with cloud-based databases and understand the architecture behind companies that you might want to work for and how they manage their data systems. Um, and then from there, you're going to want to move into big data processing. And this is really focusing on, hey, not only the database, but how do I now process and store my data to then serve the data analysis or end use cases where the data is ultimately going down the line? Um, and so here you're a lot of times going to encounter frameworks like Apache Spark. Um, and Apache Spark, and this also is Databricks, um, Databricks is just a managed version of Apache Spark, is a really powerful and kind of de facto framework for distributed data processing. And so here you're going to want to get familiar with concepts like data frames and uh, distributed data sets for parallelized data operations where you're processing many different slices of a database in, at the same time. Um, and also learn how to use PySpark, which is Python's, or the Python interpreter for Spark. So you can write your Spark transformations and action operations in Python, and that really will form the core of big data processing, um, where Spark will then take, the, take the, that script and then process it across a wide scale using distributed computing. Um, and Hadoop used to be kind of the standard for storage, but really not so much anymore. Um, now you have a much wider array of tools that work with Spark, so you can really connect Spark in pretty much any database these days. It's not any more just like a Hadoop-only framework. Um, it's really the, just what you're going to use to do large-scale data processing for it, especially for analytics use cases. Now, the next thing you're going to want to go and start learning is data lakes and how cloud storage works. So a big thing that's kind of come up in prevalence is recently are data lakes. And these are really repositories that store raw data like videos, like databases, like files, really any form of data in its native format in object storage on one of the major cloud providers like Amazon S3, Azure Data Lake, Google Cloud Storage. And then what data lakes do is provide a querying layer and searchable layer for you to go in, get that data from the various cloud storages and as a staging area for ETL processes. So you have your data available when you want to start processing it but you don't process every piece of data necessarily. You have all that raw data available in your data lake, and then once it comes time for analysis, that's when you'll actually start performing those ETL processes on it and actually processing that data. And understanding how to use these effectively is really crucial because they can become data swamps and ineffective really quick, quick, quickly. So mastering the fundamentals in a safe location is great before you actually go into and try to implement data lake in production, because this can be terabytes or petabytes of data. Now, the next concept you're going to want to explore and start learning is streaming data processing. So unlike ETL or ELT workloads, which, you know, process data in chunks or batches, streaming data processing is for things like real-time data. So let's say you need to detect fraud just as it arrives, and that means you need to process every transaction for your bank as it's made. This is where you're going to want to use tools like Apache Kafka or Flink, which are tools that allow you to ingest real-time data where you have a data producer, a consumer, and brokers. And so a data con producer produces a piece of data. That data is then transformed and then saved to a, a, a consumer of data. And Spark Streaming, Apache Flink, Apache Kafka are used to process this data in real time. And helping to under and understanding how streaming data pipelines work will help you handle those use cases where ETL just isn't going to work. You need to have that low latency for things like live analytics or monitoring systems. Now we move on to phase four, which is really advanced data engineering and analytics engineering concepts. So things you're gonna start doing in production. And the first thing is data quality and monitoring. So data quality is really critical in data engineering because if you have poor quality data, that means everything that relies on that data is inaccurate and also poor quality. So that's where you're gonna to wanna to bring in tools like grid expectations, SODA, and implement things like data quality checks, data governance, data cleansing and normalization, um, and really data monitoring. Um, so learning how to set up automated tests for data accuracy, completeness, consistency, 
and then also using tools like Prometheus and Grafana to actually monitor metrics from your data pipelines and alert you when pipelines break or there's potential issues or degradations in service. Now, another critical skill, especially for analytics engineering, is DBT. Um, so DBT, or data build tool, is a tool that allows you to structure SQL scripts in kind of a task format, almost like Airflow tasks, um, and have a sequence of transformations that are managed using SQL. So it supports modular version control transformations, you have automated testing, documentation, and allows you to create standardized transformations and make data transformations reproducible and transparent. So it's a really good tool for taking your SQL transformations to the next level. Um, and it's just a great tool in general to learn if you're interested in data engineering because it is very prevalent across the data engineering world these days. So once you've mastered all the data engineering basics and you're starting to look at machine learning, you're gonna to wanna to start learning the machine learning fundamentals. Um, and luckily that everything you really do within data engineering prepares you to start supporting machine learning workflows because most of the time, all you need to do is just have clean, well-organized data. Um, and then actually applying machine learning models as long as you're not developing the models yourselves are not that difficult. And you can kind of see where the model prep and deployment comes in that life cycle. This is where you're just taking that clean data, applying models to it, and then saving or deploying those models using the things like distributed computing, Spark that we talked about before. And even if you're not training those models, just it'll help you to understand how your data is being used if you know the fundamentals of ML. And then some good tools to learn in this space are MLflow, uh, Amazon SageMaker, Google AI Platform, Azure Machine Learning. Um, all of those kind of tools will help you work in the machine learning ecosystem and also learn how to collaborate with your ML teams to deploy those models much more effectively. Now, finally, and perhaps the most important thing um, when trying to go from zero to hero uh, in data engineering is applying your knowledge and building complete end-to-end -end projects with documentation. So build, you know, they don't need to be super complex pipelines, but build things like, hey, a pipeline that using Airflow and Spark that pulls data from a free API like Reddit, processes that data and stores it in a data warehouse, or build a hybrid pipeline with Kafka for real-time data ingestion and Spark for historical analysis so you can show how you can manage both batch and streaming data, and then set up data quality checks on your pipelines using tools like Great Expectations, show your ability to focus on data reliability. And these will help you stand out in interviews because they showcase real world skills, problem solving abilities, and by documenting them, they potential employers can also see, hey, they know how to describe projects, its purpose, and work towards a goal rather than just doing fun tech demos. Um, and not only that, but an online presence not only demonstrates your expertise, but makes it easier for recruiters to assess your abilities and will also help you show up in more searches. Um, but that's really all I have for you today. Um, I hope you have had a good uh, little video here. I hope you learned how to become a hero in data engineering. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.